I guess I'm doing the double up loads again. And I've accidentally train crashed just to beg for food. Now she just puts her little face right there. Let me see if we can get her up there. You can see her. And then I give her a treat. It goes on all day long as long as I'm sitting here. And if I'm not sitting here, she looks for me. All right, guys, we're back with another redundant episode. I realize I just say the same things over and over and over again. But what I want you guys to think of is just, and this is my frustration. Oh, and I wanted to tell you, I had another round with Adam. Oh, God, what's this guy's last name? I can't think, but uh, apparently after, uh, hi, Mandy. After, uh, oh yeah, this guy was bullying me on YouTube, Mandy, saying I didn't know what I was doing and the pager doesn't work and it's invalid, don't use it and all this stuff. So I turned on this guy like some kind of rabid hyena. And when this all happened, I made a whole video dissecting his video, but then I had gone on his YouTube and put a couple comments, very short ones, just things like terrible and awful. And so he came back at me yesterday, you know, tried to get all puffed up and come back at me. I... I tore into him like I said, you need to stop. If you're going to train people's dogs to heal and sit and do all that, you need to be able to do that with one hand tied behind your back. You, I don't want to go to a mechanic. Oh, I'm just going to use this as an example, Alice. Hi. Uh, when I go to get my oil changed, I want a mofo that knows a little bit more than how to change the oil. That he saw that that thing wasn't attached or whatever it was in another part of the engine. And told me, didn't just say, well, my job is changing oil. I, you know, I mean, we've got to have people that are, can do, you know, again, you've got to be able to train dogs to a higher level than heel sit and down and all that. And if, if you said, well, that's too much for companion dog trainers to handle. Who are these people? You know, every single companion dog trainer ought to be coming out of these little schools, learning how to do simple trained retrieves. Am I wrong, Alice? You should be able to be getting interns in there that can be teaching dogs in a couple weeks how to pick things up, whatever these people need. And we're not talking rocket science here. Uh, so anyway, Mike, I don't know if you heard that, but I just, just tore into this Adam and said, you, you know, I implore these people, help the people of your country. If you're picking up this tool as a better way to correct dogs, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. I'm going to just, this is the analogy I thought of, and that's why I decided to make this episode. You know, if you think, okay, we're taking, when people bring dogs here to me, they're tasking me with taking this dog on a journey from point A to point B, not beating this thing into submission. Oh yeah, there's actually people that's, in the past, I mean, you know, less educated types, I suppose, but, oh, do you beat them? Oh, absolutely. We beat them better than you could ever do at home, and that's why we get these results. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so if, if you said, well, I'm bringing this dog here, and I expect you to take it on a journey and you need to go on the journey with it, I'd say, I'm going to need real specific instructions. I'm going to need all kinds of landmarks where you want me to turn. Okay, you need to turn on this road. Give me five freaking landmarks before I have to turn, or I'm going to miss the road, and then you're going to correct me. Mm. You know, because if the, you know, believe me, when people can't find their way over here and then end up, oh, it's pitiful. They are getting corrections from me. You know, so if, if we said that's our job with the dog, I'm going to get the job and I'm going to take it on this journey down a road. It's a car down a road. I'm going to tell you, most people are just idling in the driveway. No, they're not even idling in the driveway. They're sitting behind the wheel, jimmying with the, whatever that thing is called. What is that thing called that you put it in drive or whatever? <laughs> this is how bad I am. They're jimmying around with that thing, stripping the gears, and then inadvertently throwing this thing in reverse. Because I don't know if you guys saw that video when I talked about the fortified dog, and Cher knows what I'm talking about, and Alice, you've seen it, and Parker's got it. The fortified dog has an installed reverse. So when you go at it, it, you know, and you know, the only reason we do that is he's coming on it. You know, but if you said, in theory, we're going to take this dog on a journey, we're going to take it from point A to point B, not... Not turn it down the wrong road and turn it down the wrong road and turn it down the wrong road. You know, and make it go back and make it go back and make it start from the beginning. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, if you want me to go on a journey from point A to B, I'll tell you. That's why GPS says 
you're now leaving your driveway. You're now, now exit your driveway. This is how it's specific instructions they're giving people. Now go da 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 da. But yeah, people want a dog to figure all these things out and immediately correct them. Because if you said, I'm your friend, I'm going to give you instructions how to get to my house. If we said, this is the journey I'm taking, you know, if this is a journey that we're taking the dog on. And then you give me really bad instructions and keep yelling at me every time I call you and say, I, I'm on the wrong street. I don't see anything what you're talking about. We're not friends after that. I never come to your house again. You know, that's what you have to think of with a dog. If that's what you're doing, if you're taking it on a journey from point A to point B, and that journey involves a lot of corrections. You're not going to be friends at the end. You're going to be Himmler. You're going to be Himmler. No, you're going to be Evan Rommel. You're going to be Rommel. You know, and they're not, you know, if you said they're not that conscious and they're not sentient banks, they absolutely are. They absolutely are. They're not walking around, these people that dumb things down to the point, you know, when people ask me things like when you touch their face, why do you touch their face? What? What's with the face touching? You know, don't touch their face. I touch my own face. You see, but if the dogs come up and put their feet on my face, I don't like it. I've got a black eye right now. You can't see it because of this goth makeup I wear. Uh, but one of them hit me right there, and then all the blood must have drained down. Because I was taking my makeup off. I'm like, God, do I put my makeup on that thing? I can't get it off. <laughs> the real Kelly wears no makeup. But that's what I want you guys to think of. If we said we're going to take a dog from point A to point B. And there's all kinds of corrections on the, along the way. That's you. That's you not making a very good roadmap, not writing out very good specific directions. I mean, you literally would need to tell me. Uh, you're going to see a great big sign. And then after that, you're going to see this and this. And then the road before it is going to be named Main Street. After you see that road turn, I might be able to get there. But yet we expect a dog to do it with, you know, without even ever creating the behavior. You know, that's what you have to think of. We can't correct anything we haven't created. If you said, I'm doing a lot of corrections, if I had some guy out here building my house and said we're doing a lot of corrections, I, I need to get a different builder. That's why I got paid as homes. I had this other builder. I had this house built when it was the, uh, nobody was building anything. Paytas was building three houses. I'll tell you, they were giving me the posh treatment. They were over here right and left. They built this house in three weeks. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I went with them because I knew, you know, they weren't going to have, and there was anybody that builds houses would tell you, there was still fuck ups. You know, there was minor corrections, and that was that's what you would have to expect. I'm always looking at everything I do and saying, you know, how can I show it better, you know, because, again, if you gave me directions to your house, this, this would be the analogy of a valid correction. And you needed me to bring you something or whatever. And I was driving to your house with your very, very specific instructions. And I saw a bar. <laughs> I saw a bar. I didn't even really drink. But I swerved off the road, went to this bar, and started meeting new friends and hanging out. And I forgot all about you. Now, that would warrant a correction. And that would warrant me saying, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. You know, it would be a different, it would be a different mentality than if you told me to go down the wrong road. I ended up at this scary bar with these terrible rednecks. They were talking all kinds of craziness. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. You know, that's what you have to think of. If our task is taking that dog from point A to point B, then let's get every tool that we can. No, no, let's not. Let's get the most advanced tool that they make. GPS. And that's where we're going to use the pager. And if you said you cannot get anywhere with any of these dogs by just using the pager, uh, my answer would be crash, uh, Chester, pre. Because I can assure you for a fact, those three have not ever had a nick. You know, nachos, bumpers, and all that, they are mostly pager, but they have had nicks. I mean, not a bunch of them, but I mean, I can't use those. It's just a clean slate. So you mean... So if you said you mean the reason they haven't had any corrections is you're carefully and slowly guiding them down the road. Yeah, that's why. That's why we have to forget about corrections. If you said I'm going to take the e-call, then, then, you know, so, okay, so you mean the pager is going to kind of be like the road signs and the speed limit signs and everything. 
that's a better application than I'm going to wait until you go down the wrong road because I didn't give you very good directions and then correct you because then you're going to be resentful and you're going to start associating that with me. <laughs> you know, I don't like people, you know, and I do. I am sincere in life and I do. I've dodged a few bullets lately because I have to be more careful who I let in my life. You know, I, I think, I, you know, anybody that to me seems like, like they're a committed, serious pro trainer. No, I, I will do anything to help them. I forget that there's evil people that are that. <laughs> and, oh, I don't, you know, luckily, thanks to my Facebook friend, and she knows who she is. I dodged a real bullet from some psycho. But anyway, that's what you guys have to think of. If you are doing a lot of corrections, that's you. That's you. That's you not writing very specific directions. You know, and you would have to think of it, well, okay, I'm coming to your house. I don't really know how to get there. Oh, no, this this is a better analogy. And I keep getting pulled over and getting tickets. I'll tell you, if you said, well, then that, that solves the problem. That's why nobody speeds, and that's because everyone's gotten a ticket, and they don't do that anymore. That's not true. You're just more careful. You're just more careful how to avoid the corrections. <laughs> you know, people go to extremes to avoid corrections. It's called radar detector and every other damn thing. Blinking the lights. I still don't understand. Maybe if somebody, I don't, Mike, tell me if they have this in the UK. But in America, if you want to warn other random drivers that you somehow have some camaraderie with because they're on the road, the same people that go into a rage and kill you. But if you want to let them know that there's a cop ahead on their journey, you double blink your lights at them or you go ch -ch with your lights. And then, you know, and people do that to you. And then you just take your foot off the accelerator and go, and then you see a cop ahead. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't know how I know that or whether someone teaches you that, but you know, again, that's a way to avoid a correction, you know? So that's what I, you guys have to think of. Your task is to take this dog from point A to point B. If you have to go really, really slow and say, don't turn here and don't do that and keep going this way, that's what you have to do. And if you can use a remote tool, and if you said, well, I like using stimulus to communicate, I say, you're a moron, you know, to communicate. They actually have, someone just sent me this this morning, this little baby chair that vibrates, comforting vibrations, because that's so organic to dogs. This is what I want you guys to understand. I didn't even know this myself until last Tuesday. You know, that vibrational communication is an organic form of communication. It's not some funny feeling they have to get used to. They don't understand what that is. They've never felt that before. I realize, especially with Crash, you see how Crash hits the ground. The reason she does that is because she understands when they hit the ground back, she can feel that. That's my theory anyway. You know, so that's what we have to understand. The pager's vibrational communication. That's organic communication. If my job is to take this dog on a journey that needs to have not only road signs and street signs and signs that say the street is ahead five miles and the street is ahead a mile and the street and the exit is coming up and the, you know, Think about it. If you said the journey I'm taking the dog on is not more complicated than somebody leaving your house that's never been to Orlando before and driving to Orlando, I'd say they'll never get there. There's so many wrong turns they can make. They'll never get there. My uncle Ralph tried to go to the airport one time. You guys, you don't remember this. A lot of you guys that haven't been with me, but my uncle Ralph moved down here partly because of the sushi that I always told him about. But when he first came down here, he didn't know his way around at all. He had a rental car and everything. And he was going to the Sanford airport. I was so worried he was going to get lost. Yeah. Oh, he took all these wrong turns and was completely lost. And it took him like five hours to get to the airport. You know, and can you imagine how frustrating and upsetting that is? So, you know, if you're a dog, you don't even know where these people are taking you on this journey. All you know is you're just turning here and turning there. And there's corrections involved. And given your choice in life, you're not going to have that. You know, you're not going to have that. You're not going to choose corrections. You're going to choose, if you said, I am viewing this dog with unconditional positive regard, I understand the previous owners have made it very, very clear what this dog is to do. It is quite clear that the dog is an extremely defiant individual that must be corrected. 
I'd say, oh my God, people do everything wrong from the set. That woman that came and picked up John Henry, the first thing she did was touch his face and he went, and I people think I'm insane. I said, don't touch their face. Where, where is it written in a book? If you went and met a stranger and they started reaching for your face, you'd back up too. Who wouldn't? So frustrated. That's what you guys have to think of, though, you guys. If we're, hi, Linda. You know, again, we're taking a dog on the journey. We're viewing it, and this is why it's hard to train your own dogs. Look at Crash. I've inadvertently trained her just to stand there. And then finally she wears me down. I was trying yesterday to watch a whole episode of Snapped and ignore her. Look, her little nose is just right there. Now she'll go away. You know, but you've got to have that level of a relationship with the dog that you can just, you know, and the more I think about that, you guys, I mean, if you've got dogs that you have a long-term relationship that this dog, that's why I don't believe in saying, you know, like when, you know, with people, if the dog's name is, you know, Bear or whatever, Bear, come. Long-term, you're not going to still keep doing that. If you said, yes, that's how I spoke to my child when it was three, and that's how I spoke to my child today at 33. <laughs> so you're a lunatic. You're a lunatic. You know, I don't call this dog Crash. I call her Mundo. You know, and I don't call Thimble Thimble. I call her Lee. You know, so if you said, well, we don't do that with our dog, then I'd say you've got to get a better relationship. You don't have any nicknames for people that are close to you in your life. You know? I know that woman did inform me they're not children. And I'm sorry I've been misleading you people all this time saying that they were. You know, but again, if you're saying it's a relationship, this is a sentient being, I got this individual to be my companion, and that on any level is a friend, is a friend. And yes, we have to define, you know, we, we're, we're the ones that has to define the friendship, you know. And that's why, honestly, I get up, if I unfriended you, it's because sometimes I get up and have a realization, they're not my friend. <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know, and that's what happens with people's dogs. That's why they can't let these things loose. This dog is looking back at them and saying, they're not my friend. Anybody that's doling out, they're the only individual in my life that's doling out all these corrections. They're not my friend. You know, especially very sensitive dogs. You know, you just want to think of it. If the dog is a car, I'm taking it on a journey. And I'm throwing this thing in drive and reverse. I'm not putting on the turn signals. I'm doing, I mean, think about it, you guys. If you told me how to get to your house, Linda, if you said, here's how to get to my house, I would say, let me get a pen. And you'd say, use GPS. I would say, still, I like to have written directions, too, you know, that I can look at, too. The last time I even left here to do, I did an appointment at Blue's house. I'm not even going to tell you how much I charged this guy. This guy's a billionaire. I had these directions written down every street, turn point five miles. I still got lost. I still got lost. And I was very, the whole journey, I was very nervous. I was very nervous because I didn't know where I was. And that's how you guys have to think of the dog, a lot of these dogs. I'm very nervous. I don't want to turn on the wrong street. I know they're expecting me at a certain time. He wasn't even there. He wasn't even there, and they'd lost their collar by the time I got there. You know, but I, you know, that's, that's how I want you to think the dog is thinking. I don't know where we're turning next, but if this next turn, corner is another one of their corrections, tell you I don't like, it. they're not my friend. If this dog is looking at you, you know, and that's, I'm, I was trying to upload that video of bumpers. If you can't, if you can't put your, if you're putting your hands on a dog and it's, well, you need to understand they don't trust you. They don't trust you or they're jacking with you. It's one of those two things. Because if you said you don't have a single dog there that you can't put your hands all over and they don't even notice, I'd say, I do. Yeah, I do. They trust me. And so they don't, you know, they don't think I'm jacking with them. But if you're trying to look at their feet, you know, and they're biting your hand and stuff, well, that's, you've got to face the fact, you know, Crash does it to me. I have to face the fact that, you know, so I don't play with her and stuff. If I got on the ground and started rolling around, she would play with me just like she did these other dogs and think nothing of it. She would not think, that's my master. I shouldn't do that, you know? 
she would say, oh, it tries to play. Oh, you have my address embedded in your brain as you, I'm sure you were nervous as hell when you drove here the first time. You probably had your hands on the wheel. Da, 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 da. You know, again, you want to say, if I'm this dog's backseat driver, no, 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 I'm its driver's ed teacher. I don't know, you guys, they probably don't have that now, but when I was a kid in high school, you had driver's ed where it was a car that had two wheels or two sets of controls so the, you know, instructor could, you know, slam on the brakes or turn the wheel when you started, you know, messing up. I want you guys to know it always uh, only tells me like three people are watching. So I, that's why I don't see any, everybody. If it's like romper room and you want me to shout out, then you have to say hi. <laughs> then maybe I see. A, I looked everywhere for my glasses. I couldn't find them. And I have the black eye. Anyway, um, but that's what you guys have to think of. That's why if, you know, if I, if you said, if I said there's, you know, using the electronic caller as a cue and a guide is better than corrections. And you said, no, it's not. Then I'd say. You're not my friend, you know, that you're not even able to, you know, no, that using stimulus for corrections and cues is the best way, period. Oh, that woman, ugh, what a witch. Uh, everything she said, period. No way, never, da, 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 da. You know, and that's the kind of thinking that gets people nowhere in life, because I'll tell you, I've noticed something, a component in every successful person I know, and that is willingness to try something. If it doesn't work, they're not going to keep doing it, but they are willing to try things. And I know a lot of successful people. My brother's really successful. He's like a businessman and everything. He's, he's the uh, senior VP of mortgages for Wells Fargo. So when he came here, I said, oh, who wants to help uh, do the pig play the piano? I'll do it. You know, this guy's no piano pig player, but he was willing to do it. You know, he was willing to do it. It didn't matter what it was. He would try it, you know, and that's, you know, that's what's wrong with people. You know, and that's why I ripped into that damn Adam so much. You're not even willing to try it, you know, to say, we're not going to use it as a guide. We're going to continue to use it to correct the dog. You just end up with resentful individuals. If you said, I can't place myself in that dog's position at all and see where, you know, if I was that dog that I would want to go somewhere and I would want to meet someone that then corrected me and told me how to live right. <laughs> oh, please. You know, they're not, you know, it, it's, you know, you have to be, it's, it's a combination and you do have to be the fun friend. If you're no fun, I'll tell you what I, when people are no fun, they're not my friend. They're someone I avoid. They're one of those people that I tell you about that, you know, if they want to go to dinner, I don't, you know, anything's happening, I can't go. <laughs> Anything, you know, so that's, that's why these dogs run away from these people. You know, if they're thinking to themselves, getting back over there by them, they'll set me straight. They'll give me corrections, you know. And that's why the pager is so fascinating. We can use it as an accelerator. We can help the dog understand, go faster. We can use it as a turn signal. We can help them understand to turn. We can use it as a rumble strip. And that's why they use rumble strips. They actually have cars now that the tire vibrates like you're hitting a rumble strip. That's so effective. That's so effective to affect immediate behavior change. So if you said, there's not a human being on the planet that hits a rumble strip more than once. It doesn't have that. I don't think so. I don't think so. If you said there's some that overreact, then maybe they make the rumble strip less rumbly. <laughs> you know, I want you to look into that, Mike, and find out there's got to be people doing studies on what the right level, you know, we don't want people hitting the rumble strip and going, ah, you know, we also don't want them hitting the rumble strip and doing nothing because we're finna, you're going to go off a cliff. You know, so that's how you have to think of it. Corrections in general just don't work because, again, you fortify yourself against them. If I have to go somewhere and I have to go there really fast, I mean, I'm not saying to myself, oh, a speed limit sign is to 65. That's me. <laughs> Hardly, you know. I say, how far over that can I go and not get in trouble? You know, that's what people say. How far over that can I go before they have any, you know, 
any basis to say or do anything or see that I'm, you know, committing an obvious refusal to obey, you know, the speed limit sign, you know. So, you know, you're always thinking in those terms if corrections are involved, you know, whereas if, if I'm, you know, just going from point A to point B and I just want to have a nice trip, that's my favorite thing to ask people, how's the trip going, especially if they're coming from far away. Anyway, guys, so that's what I want you to think of. We're using the pager as a guide. We're not using the stimulus as a correction. And if you said, well, what have you got to back up your pager? You and what army? Me and my Nick. That's who. Me and my Nick and my trigger finger. That's who. You know, and if I see obvious refusals, you know, yeah, I will give them a ticket. I will give them a ticket. But I'll also, you know, only use it in the context of the ticket happened over there, and then you just go on, kind of go on about your way. It's not a ticket in that there's no, uh, you know, like, oh, you're not getting any treats now because you didn't, you know, it really just doesn't even work that way. So I want you guys to think of, you've got to have that envision in your mind. Here's me and the dog. Here's point A. Here's point B. If I'm doing a lot of corrections, a very good guide. Oh, think of it this way. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this. You've got a friend that claims to know how to get somewhere. Oh, this is Breck. Oh, Breck's coming over today, too. And my cousin, and Quay. I don't know who else is going to be here. And Jen is coming over to look at dogs. Uh, and your friend, uh, you're very nervous, and you keep saying, how do we get there? How do we get there? Where do we turn? And then they say to you, don't worry, I know how to get there. So, you know, that's kind of what we're saying to the dog. Don't worry on how to get there. But so then we're going to see Dave Haas. And you guys know, this is my, you know, on the show, especially my character is just, you know. So we're driving. Now Breck is making wrong turns and we're not getting there. So I'm freaking out. Now I'm the dog. Now I'm freaking out. Why are we going? Turn, turn. Where's the parking? Turn, turn. You know, because I'm so convinced we're going to get there late and miss the whole show. You know, and that's, you know, and this is, and this is what the dog is thinking, too. We're going to miss the whole show. We're going to miss the whole show. You know, if you're there, not getting him there and stuff like that. So, you know, and he's just glossing the whole thing over. Ugh, it was awful. And we had Rocco with us. He was acting all crazy. Uh, oh, we brought him cookies and everything. Now I just wanted to get there. So, anyway, we finally did get there. But, you know, m me thinking that he, you know, wasn't turning at the right place when he said he knew how, which caused me to freak out, and that's what the dog is doing when you're saying something, and then it's not working out. You know, hi, David. That's what I want you to think of with the little man again. You can't really have any corrections. you got to get this little guy on the superhighway to wherever it is you're taking him. Wherever it is you're taking him, you need to get him on the superhighway. And there can't be any corrections. Because you have to think of, you know, if you said, well, you know, what would be the, you know, the worst case scenario? You're taking this dog on a journey. Oh, catastrophic method failure. You're getting a big crash, which is what's happening with a lot of dogs. And if you're behind the wheel when the accident happens, I'll tell you, they lose all faith in you. They, I can see Crash's tail over there. I'm afraid to even look. I'm to the point now. Uh, the barfing alarm isn't going to wake me up. I'll tell you, the sound of plastic crunching alarm, that'll get me up quick. Because <laughs> to see, oh, my God, what is it? Usually it's just a bottle. Anyway, you guys, so we're going to go out there and do videos, but that's what I want you to think of. If if this dog has all kinds of drive, okay, it's a car, so it's in drive, it's going forward, and it keeps getting in crashes and turning on the wrong street, that's you. That's you. And if you are like David and you bought a really, really fast car, you need to get out of uh, the little town streets, the little back streets, and you need to get find the Autobahn. Oh, crash. You need to find the Autobot. i got to get Crash's drink. And, you know, you got to get the journey going. Because that's what you have to realize. Dogs that can go real far, you know, dogs that, can, dogs that can't go very far are only going on a short journey. If you're only taking the dog, if you're only teaching it to heal and sit and just do, she's going to be right back up here in a minute, you know, just do basic things. You're not going on a very far journey. If you've got these working dogs and stuff, you need to get out of as quickly as possible. You need to get out of the subdivision and get on the interstate, you know. And there's some dogs that are never going to get out of the subdivision. That's how you think of it, you know, need to think of it. 
but you know, think of it if it was you. If everybody knew how to go from point A to point B, they wouldn't have GPS with an actual voice that tells you, don't turn there, you're gonna go off the cliff. You know, so if you're letting this dog fall off a cliff, that's you, that's you. I suggest all of you get out there, go buy a freaking collar and just use the pager to communicate with the dog. And if you said, I can't do that, I'd say, well, you're a terrible trainer then. Just find another line of work. Because if you, if you said, oh, they should invent a game show where they gave one person um, a pager and the other person, and they just had to give them looks and gestures and stuff to figure stuff out. It'd be so hard. <laughs> Nobody would ever do it. <laughs> Can anybody that's been friends for any length of time or married for any length of time, these people are going to be figuring this stuff out faster than, what's that one game, charades? You know, so that's what you have to think of. If you can't do anything, if you have no ability to take this, look at Crash. If you have no ability, look at her little face. I'm going to get candy eyes for her. I think I'm going to write, don't you think that'd be a good children's book, you guys? And go and uh, get those candy eyes and just like, you know, stick them on there. <laughs> anyway, just, yeah, I got up this morning and I just unfriended some people just because I realized these people aren't my friends. You know, they're not my friends. They don't support me. They don't like anything I do. I like all their stuff. They don't like anything I do. I got rid of them. <laughs> I just don't know, you know, and that's what you have to think of with the dog. If you're saying to yourself, this dog doesn't have any reason to say to itself, they're not my friend, you know, you know, then you're probably not their friend. You know, if, if given a choice, they don't follow you or they run away from you the second they get a chance, they're not your friend. You know, you're above all else safeguarding in that dog's mind. And you need to write this down. Cher, I hope you're keeping that log book. Uh, whether it's true or not that this dog believes, and it should be true, but I mean, there are some dogs that are jerks, but, you know, that I, any action I have is positive regard for that individual. Because if you said, what's, what uh, litmus test do you use for a friend? that, that this individual would only act on my behalf in a positive regard, you know, not, oh yeah, she went and said, you know, oh, they went and said, you know, this and that and the other about you, you know, it's like, that's not my friend, you know, even the friend of my enemy isn't my friend anymore, got rid of a bunch of people for that too, so that's how you have to think of the dog, if this dog is not looking at you that way, you know, and if you said, well, Crash doesn't think, you know, you're her friend. Yeah, she does. She does. She thinks you can't see her on this one. She's right there, though. She's right there. That's what I've now taught her, just to stand on me and get tricked. So you've got to have in your mind any action I have. A correction would be very difficult. And if you said, where do the bolt, where's the lion's share of your corrections come from? Indirect pressure from the recall. Because I can make something big happen far away from me and still safeguard the fact that I'm acting with positive regard. How? When the dog gets there, yay! It would really be hard to think any otherwise. So that's what you need to all say to yourself. I'm safeguarding that above all else, that this dog does view me as someone who's acting towards it with positive regard, not someone who is waiting to correct me, waiting to send me down the wrong street and give me a ticket. You know, they just given a choice in a short lifespan of a dog. That's not going to be the people that they love. That's not going to, the owners aren't going to do that. If you're trying to take a dog away from an owner and be Rommel, it's going to go back to them and they're going to be Fluffy the Marshmallow guy. Yeah, that's the problem. You got Rommel, you got the marshmallow guy. There, you know, you it's got there's gotta be some middle ground, you know, or it's not gonna transfer when they go back home. So that's why if we give them the pager, you know, we give them road signs, we give them a guide, it, it, they're just gonna be more successful. It, you know, if you told me to go from here to 
oh, there's a subdivision right over there, uh, Water's Edge, that's all windy roads and everything. If you wanted me to go there right now, you'd have to give me real specific instructions where to turn, and all the houses there look alike. So you'd really have to just, I'd need all kinds of landmarks, you know, and this is what I talk about with the precursors with the dog. You know, when you go on the interstate, the exit is ahead, the exit is ahead, the exit, it's telling you three times the exit is ahead. And, and, you know, people want a dog to instantly know the exit's ahead and then correct the dog when it didn't get off on the exit. You know, so you're the driver, you're the guide, you know, and that's why I always talk about the momentum. Get the momentum flowing the direction you want it to go. If this dog goes really fast, then get it doing really fast recalls. Get it doing really fast sendaways. Don't correct it for going fast. You know, use that to your advantage. Anyway, guys, I gotta go. I'm gonna run out there real quick and try to do uh, Parker default down again before everybody gets here because um, Barack is coming over with his dogs and they've got, you know, problems. And my cousin's bringing her dog and it's got problems. And, you know, it's, you know, they'll all get in a big fight. And that's, you know, if you said, that's so different than people because you can get groups of people together and they don't get in a fight. <laughs> oh, please. You want to see a bunch of fights? I'll go on one of these chat boards. I'll be in fights with complete strangers I don't even know. And they'll be ripping me apart. I don't know these people. You know, so that's, you know, they are not humans. But if you said that, do you think that their minds are evolving? Yeah, I, I honestly do. I honestly do. Because you see dogs, if you said, well, there's a spectrum of dogs, just like there's a spectrum of people. You know, there's some people that are just more primitive acting. They are. If you don't believe me, go to Tennessee, you know, and then there's intellectual. So I, I, I do see a lot of intellectual dogs and their minds. You know, if you said, well, what's, you know, feral dogs. If you took a scale and said there's feral dogs and that's how those wolves act. You see how pinky and skittish they are. They've all got a reverse. They've all got an installed reverse. That's why, as that I know of, and somebody please look this up, there's never been a fatal attack by a wolf. Maybe in the olden days. Not in modern days, though, because they're too hinky. Too hinky and scared. I know in Call of the Wild, they, these wolves were always eating these people. They were eating these sled dogs. It was terrible. The stuff they used to let us read when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. So, you know, but they're all very hinky and feral. And if you said, well, how hard would it be to train one of those? Uh, you'd have to get the momentum going forward first. The fact that they have such a well-installed reverse, you're going to have to overcome that first. And then you're going to have to get them going forward to get them doing anything. So not that good. So if you said intellectual dogs, you know, dogs that were the subject of selective breeding to, you know, do certain things, their minds are getting more evolved. And I'd say absolutely. So, you, so if you said to me, you mean the most evolved human today? is more evolved than the most human in the 60s. Yes, because honestly, if you look at, I was watching some of these old crime shows from the 60s and the people that were the psychologists and stuff, and these were the most educated people at their time. Honestly, they look a little hokey now, you know, compared to the people that we have now, you know, and compared to the way they talk now, you know, they're even more intellectual. So dogs are getting more intellectual, so we have to evolve. We have to evolve, the tools have to evolve. That's why we can't just keep using stimulus. That's why we can't justify stimulus as a cue. As a cue. You can't. Because when somebody told me, oh, they have this little vibrating baby seat, I said, no, 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 no. That's going to freak babies out. You're going to have babies flying out of these little seats, screaming, oh, this, this company is going to be under lawsuits when this little chair starts vibrating and these babies just... I said, I think what we need to do is get low-level stimulus. Oh, this is somebody calling. That's somebody calling me. I'm, I'm impossible to get a hold of. Anyway, um, so that's what I want you guys to think of. We're just going to use the pager as a guide, and we're going to find different ways to do that. You know, and if you sit, oh, gosh, it's right here. I'm going to give her a cookie. I hope you can hear her chewing. 
She's my companion. She just stays by me all the time. At least she's not chewing anything up. You know, that's what I want you guys to think of. So if, and if you're not able to use the pager for communication because your timing is so bad and your communication skills are so bad that nothing you do, you're not even able to send a text message. And you're not going to have any success with this, you know, but if you just think of it as that, I'm going to just, we're going to have to mollycoddle these things all the way along this journey. And we'll be successful and we'll get there. And once they know the way, that's why I've, oh, these people just don't give up. I'm going to call this guy right back, right after this. You know, but that's what you want to say. Okay, if, if, okay, so now you've gotten the directions. Hi, Shai. You've gone on this journey. You now know the way. Eventually, you can go there and you will turn and do all these things without even looking. Am I wrong? If I had to go someplace in Water's Edge right now that required several turns, I would need specific, maybe even the first five or six times. And after that, I would start getting comfortable with it. And then eventually, I would probably, hi, Janet, how's the animation going, girl? I was thinking about you. I need to cook some chicken. I got some chicken cooked today. You're going to see some animation today. Anyway, that's what I want you guys to think of. There's, there's no corrections. There's no corrections. Those are later. Those are later. After you've been on, after you've taken this dog on this journey 27 times, and that son of gun going to turn on the wrong street and go to the bar. <laughs> then there's a correction. Then there's a correction. And then, you know, I want you to think if it was me. And I was coming to your house. I was, I was always reliable. I always came to your house. And then that one day, Instead of coming to your house, I went to this bar and started hanging out with strangers and drinking and acting all crazy. And you were mad, and I was sorry, and I didn't want to do that again. <laughs> and, you know, that's how you have to think of it. It would be a different dynamic than if the instructions you gave me took me straight to that bar. Then I just met these people and started having fun, you know. Or your directions were so vague, I didn't know where to go. Is what, is what, what it ends up being. Because if you think these people at home have made these instructions for this dog, very, very, they can't even find their way to my house. Oh, no. Can't even find their way. So I'm expected to believe that they were able to, you know, take this dog on a journey. They can't even find their way to my house. <laughs> anyway, you guys, I will uh, be right back with Parker.